All right there, so um, I'm going to take you through some essentials you need to cut a hip roof and take you through a bit of a tutorial on how to cut this hip rafter in. So just see here, we've got um, a roof going on. Okay, current existing house with an extension. Okay, so the existing line of the house is about here. So we've got a cut on these two hips and this valley here. But it's a bit of a complex one because we can't get um four commons up to get this hip so what we're having to do is we sort of we put one down there we continued this wall plate through here and we put another common up there so then when we got our four commons up okay we got that line there and then we divided that up took the center line there through there okay for that hip so whatever that was 4450 we came out 4450 that way and strong line so we put two triangles together as you'll see in the time lapse all right so so we've got the architect's drawings okay and then also we've got the engineer's drawings so the engineer is the guy that tells us what sizes and where to use them and what we're bottling them up with etc so on here we had double hip beams, 47 by 170. Same with the valley boards as well. And the double ridge going through as well. At 170, 6 by 2 or 145 rafters. Um, so yeah, there was lots going on, especially as we got a dormer to build underneath here. So a bit of a head scratcher at times, but I'm going to take it through. So first thing to do is find, as usual, your pitch on your roof. So you pitch on your roof, okay. This is a bit of a head scratcher because on the main roof, this roof here, the existing, that was 37 degrees. And this was 32, 33 degrees, okay. And it's surprising how much of the degree that ma makes, um, how much difference that makes. Oh, it's 33 it was, okay can drop it quite a lot so ready right now okay so we turn turn to the right page what have we got here 37 degrees okay you see that i've got some scribbles on there as well so what we did so for the hip i'm trying to hold this phone up here okay but for the hip Yeah, so everything runs off of these centre lines. So what I've drawn out there is just this section here. Okay, imagine that that goes through there. Okay, so we want to get this hip up here. Okay, so all we're doing here is forming up a square. Okay, so take your span. Okay, so my span's six metres. Okay, just to make the maths easy. So from, find your centre, from there to the centre of there, three metres. From there to the centre of your rafter, you're again three metres, yeah? Okay, so if you're using a 50 mil rafter, you're going to come back this way, 25 mil. Okay, so... 3 meters minus 25 gives you 2975. Okay, and this is what's called your clear span. Okay, so if you do 2975 times by your length of hip, okay, per meter, which is 1.6. 04. That's let me just do that in the calculator. That gives you 2975 times by my run of hip per meter 1.602 gives you a true length on your hip of 4766. Okay, so your true length of your hip. I've got my hip, it's from that point there. This is a real crude drawing. Uh, 
Okay. So that point there. All right. Or if you're doing a double, your double just goes in like that, two bits joining together. That's what we've done in the video. Okay. So your true length is 4766. Six. Right. Now, you'll see in a video, you've got your wall plate like so. If you do a center line through there, okay, and then you're going to come 25 mil either side, the thickness of your rafter. Where those two points meet, you're going to cut that off. So your wall plate's going to end up looking like, like that. All right, and then that, whatever that distance is from there to there, okay, on, a, on our double hip, it was 40 mil. Okay, you need to come back this way, 40 mil, okay, and deduct that. And that's when you get that hip coming down and it sits right in nice and tight to that plate. Okay, all right. Otherwise, it will just sit to the point of the plate. Okay, so where did we get those two? Where did we get our edge? So the top of a hip, because you've made a square up, because you've made that square. Okay. That cut there is 45 degrees. Okay. And then for our hip or valley, our ridge cut is 62 degrees. All right. But if you're using like a Stanley square, okay, with the, the black one with the swivel arm, you need to deduct that off of 90. So... 90 minus 68 gives you 828. So it'll be 28 degrees on the square. All right. Don't ask me why they do that, but that's what happens. Okay. But what I do sometimes is just cut a little off cut down, hold it up in place. Does it line through with a plate? Yes, it does. You'll notice if you've cut it the wrong way around, it'll be really severe and it will look miles off straight away. So it's well worth doing it with an off cut. All right. A lot of these beams that the engineers put in, so the triple timbers and the RSJs, these are all loading points for the ridges and the hips coming down. So we're going to put 100 by 100 posts down onto these uh, beams, and that takes any whip out of the roof and also adds strength to it. Um, you'll see that the scribbles all over his drawings there, but all of that's vitally important that you get that in before doing the roof. Because if a building inspector comes, they'll fail it if you're not complying with his drawings. You know, it's worth adding as well that the Ready Retina works off perfectly square buildings. As we all know, brickies don't uh, always work to the same tolerances as those chippies. So you need to also, sometimes I just double check it with a tape measure because you're cutting a big hip here. So if you get it wrong, so make sure I'm within the money as well. You know, it's always worth doing that. Um, so, and then also when we're doing the jack rafters, jack uh, ridge cut is the same as the roof so 32 degrees and then the edge cuts in the book for across the top with the edge cut as well if you're using the uh, square you have to convert it as well um, but I'm more and more using the skill saw which you, you keep it the same it's always a bit of a head scratch of that one I tell you but you get there in the end fill in opposites as well when you go through here because um, that's what keeps it all nice and strong. And it also looks nice as well when it's all done on opposites. But where we've come around the other side into the flying hip, you've got two different pitches meeting so the centres don't work uh, opposite each other. So, and then this hip's going to have, it's going to be bolted together as well. So you're going to have some M10s coach bolts on it with uh, washers done up nice and tight well worth going uh screw fix and getting like a little torque 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 set 